Hello, my name is Rusty Belcher. Welcome to this Imagine It Technologies Customer Request Tech Tip. In this tech tip today, we're going to be taking a look at how to make this really complex cut uh, in this base part. What we have is a base part, and if I take a moment and go over and change my color, you can see that this base part has a very complex cutout that has been uh, placed into the component. And what we want to do is actually remove the material, uh, the vertical material above the cutout. And there's a number of ways that we could possibly go about doing that, but uh, we've settled on one particular way that we're going to document in this video. So we're going to start off by creating a sketch on one side of the part. We'll zoom in here. And I'm going to generate a couple of vertical lines. I want to make sure that these lines are vertical. And we're going to uh, add a tangent constraint between these lines and the closest edge of our component. Same thing right here. And I'll use the trim command to remove the excess material. Now I'm going to cap this off where we are eventually going to create a second solid body that we're going to use to make the cut with. Uh, so this is going to be the profile of my second body. And I'm going to use the loft command in order to generate that body. And it is important that we don't confuse the loft command uh, at all with any extraneous edges. So I'm going to take the opportunity to come in here and remove any edge I don't need there are some very complex edges where this cutout actually meets this face and we want to make that just as clean as possible in way of the loft command so this might take a, a minute or so to do but it's well worth it in the long run you want to leave the arc that is tangent to the line so we'll leave that there now you can test your profile uh, I test profiles by just starting the extrude command so when I start the extrude command if there is a valid profile there it will automatically select it you can see that it is I'm just gonna cancel that so I have a good valid profile now I'm gonna go to the other side of the component and basically do the exact same thing so bear with me. I think in this case, here's a maybe a little bit of a tip. I can delete all my edges first and then come in with my project geometry and select the edges that I need. That might be a faster way to do it. But in either method, you're going to have to address the edges. Now I'm going to start basically the same thing. I am also going to project this little point right there. I just want to make sure my lines are even as I create them. But uh, I'm going to create a vertical line here and a vertical line right over here. We'll make sure that these lines are tangent. and I'll trim this one. Now in looking at this customer part I noticed a little bit of a discrepancy here, a little bit of a point of concern in that I really don't get an intersection here. There, This is such a complex uh, situation where these surfaces line up that we don't get an intersection even though we're tangent. So I am going to use a coincident constraint and state that the end point of this line should be coincident to this arc and I've got an extra arc right there so we'll just delete that so there we go uh, I'll finish up by placing a line up here I'll trim off the corners I think I have to extend this one and then trim that one I also want to check my profile here, so I'm going to start my extrude command. And again, I'm just going to select that profile and just make sure it closes accurately. So now that I have my two sketches, I can begin the process of creating the lofted solid body. 
To do that, we're going to start the loft command right at the beginning. I'm going to choose to make a new solid body. I'll select one sketch and then the other. Now, this is a very, very complex shape. Uh, so I do want to include a couple of rails here. So I'm going to spin this around and zoom in. And I'm actually going to pick these tangent edges. This one right here is a good rail. And this rail, we'll click to add and select this rail right here. You could add other rails in the process if you wanted to. Just make sure the rails are in the outline of the profile. We'll click OK and we generate our second body. Now in this particular process I've tried to go ahead and use the cut right now and you get some inconsistent face body relationships that prevent this part from cutting the part right now. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. I'm going to take the visibility off of this component and basically what I want to do at this point is eliminate this curve feature from the base block. To do that I'm simply going to sketch on this face and I'm going to use the extrude command. Uh, we are going to select both profiles that are on this face, the outer profile. Again, it's a complex shape, so it'll take a second to calculate that. And the inner profile. And I want to extrude them to this back face over here. And we'll click OK and basically, oh, I forgot to make it a join. There we go. Make sure you do that. So basically, we have a blank block right here. If I were to check my uh, interior parts, I'm just going to change my color, you would see that there are no interior features left over from that operation. So now we go back to the browser, turn on the visibility of our second body, and now I simply want to subtract this tool body from the base part. To do that, I'm going to use the Combine command. We'll start the Combine command. I'm going to select my base component, and then I'll select the tool body. And then my operation, in this case, is Cut. I click OK, and we have the cutout of that complex shape that we were looking for. So this is going to conclude our uh, customer request tech tip on generating a complex cut using a loft and a second solid body.